Hey guys, Rice here bringing you another commentary. We're at part two of the Streamer Spotlight series featuring Eggio, and this time we've got a ZVT. Eggio is uh, the player that we talked about last week, or last whatever it was that I casted it and uploaded it. Uh, he's the Cornadian uh, Zerg player, A plus, A, well, it's not A plus anymore, sorry, A level, low S. And uh, today we've got a TVZ, or a ZVT, depending on who you are. I guess in his case, it's a ZVT. He's going under the name SK Cute and playing against a guy S12NA, so we're just going to call him S1. Today we're playing on Python. Let's check it out. Python, whoop, I hit the wrong button. Python is a four player map. And uh, if you check it out, you can see that there are a couple of quick locations, which you can actually look here down on the mini map. Uh, it looks like we're going to get a quick scout out from Eggio over to the, the Terran player. Uh, but also, as you, you look at the map, it's mirrored. And they've got another two bases on the bottom left side. So, can be cross-map positions. Sometimes you get lucky in the Zerg position here. It's great to get an early scout on the Terran, see what they're doing, see if there's any cheese going on. Uh, so we're not going to see any proxy racks, or we shouldn't see any proxy racks this game, based on how quickly he's getting over there with his Overlord. Uh, big snake in the middle, hence Python. I suppose it's a Python, but a little hard to tell. Uh, kind of a stubby, stubby snake, if you ask me. And then there's also a couple of uh, mineral patches in the corners that are function like islands, but uh, unfortunately for the Terran, you can't just drop a CC over there and, and start mining away because it is blocked by a little mineral patch uh, that you've got to mine out. So drop ships are required in order to get that one. Hope you guys don't mind my transparent shirt today. I had a green shirt on and just honestly didn't feel like changing it for the green screen. <laughs> Rocking out my, my Zelda shirt today. Not, not the, the biggest Zelda fan beyond The Legend of Zelda, but here we are. Uh, so let's see what we got going on in the game. Eggio is going for a standard 12 hatch, which is a pretty normal build, getting that pool going next. And we see a uh, barracks out from the Terran player. Again, not surprising considering there is an Overlord out on the field. Uh, the Terran player is very likely to play standard in this position, I would think. Although, you never know, you could get a little sneaky, I suppose. Uh, but at this point, everything looks pretty normal, uh, with the exception of with the exception of that, uh, another barracks out in the left side, just off center. So if there's some zerglings coming out, uh, it would seem fairly unlikely that there's going to be anything funky going on. Uh, and I would be surprised if Eggio smelled this because his overlord is far enough away outside of the base where he really can't see much of anything. So. I suppose he might be able to see just the beginning of this this command center being built, and without seeing that, maybe there's a chance. Uh, if he were to scout here with Lings, he'd see that these these Marines are blocking the ramp, uh, which is pretty typical, though, as well. Um, although, yeah, often you'll see a, bun a bunker out here with the Marines stopping you from getting any further than that. But he also knows the Overlord's probably right outside of there. But let's see what's going on with the barracks. He is making a couple Marines out of there. And Eggio has three Zerglings out checking for proxies. I guess he does smell something. And he's going to find it. He's going to find that barracks and that first Marine. So uh, I would imagine we'll see a Sunken being morphed over here. And we do. We do. That's a smart move uh, to be able to block that. And he's going into a quick lair. And he's going to get a free, maybe a free SEV here. Uh, yeah, for sure that Sunken's going to get it. And he's going to drop down a second one as well. I would think two or three is going to protect them against any very early harass. Honestly, even that one will, will handle uh, unupgraded Marines. Uh, and it looks like there's an Academy coming down, but it's going to be a while before he gets Stim or Range or Medics. So there's some time here for Eggio to build up some D and uh, remake that, that extractor that uh, may have failed the first time. And, and really, Eggio's in pretty good shape. He knows what's going on. The Terran player is lifting off the racks, maybe to use as a scout to see what he can get up in, up in this, uh, this base over here. And Eggio is just going to continue to sunk it up as he macros up. I would imagine we'll see a Spire coming out here after that since he'll have a lot of mobility. And with these early Marines, it's unlikely he'll try to go anything like early. Well, I guess he could go Quick Lurkers, but... I would expect to see a Spire, and it uh, looks like 
It looks like that's what he's going for, considering he had over 200 minerals when he went to go build it. Um, so that'll be good. I mean, he's got a real close flight path to uh, to the Terran base here, the Terran main base. And, ooh, we have a potentially sneaky barracks going up on the side. I wonder if he's looking to land over here and maybe make some Marines. He, oh, he was heading that direction. Oh, he still is heading that direction. But the Zerglings there are going to stop that right quick. And he does think twice. And it looks like he's probably going to bring that back here for regular production. In the meantime, uh, eBay is under construction. I can imagine we'll see some plus one upgrades coming out shortly here. Egio continuing to macro up. Looks like he's trying to drone, and he's actually going pretty heavy on the sunkens here. He's up to he's going up to five, which uh, I mean four four is usually enough, especially with a couple of lings. He's going up to six, and uh, with that, yeah, the Terran player is just going to back off. There's there is no gap to be found on that defense. Not right now. Not without a dropship anyway. We might be able to see some dropship play here as he's also, again, pretty close to the backside of this base uh, for Egio. So Egio should be making some mutas here any second. It looks like he is not supply capped, but making an overlord and making two overlords and nothing out of here. So not sure what he's waiting for. Uh, well, uh, he is waiting for a queen's nest. Kind of surprising, slightly unexpected. In the meantime, uh, S1 is making turrets, which is what I would be doing right now after uh, seeing that he's pretty well defended up here. You would think that uh, Mutas would be coming your way, and maybe that's what Egio is going for, play, trying to play the reverse psychology game here. And, and maybe he's just going Queens. <laughs> maybe he's going to go Ensnare or Spawn Brutaling on the, uh, on the Marines here. That would be super effective. Uh, but more likely, uh, he's teching up to either, either, well, hive tech for sure. I would imagine we'll see a hive coming down here very shortly. And we do have Muta out on the field. So that tells me, you guessed it, we're going to see some guardians. Yes, I love guardians. Let's see if he can accomplish anything here with these Muta. Uh, oh, he's going to see four turds greeting him at the front or the back door, I should say. And, uh, he's up to eight Muta. So... Uh, certainly he could try to pick off a little bit, but we've got a very dense marine grouping here. Uh, we've got a pretty dense marine grouping in the middle of the field, and with four turrets, it seems unlikely that he's going to do too much damage here. But keep in mind, there is no expansion yet, so he might be able to pick off the SCV building, the command center here at the bottom right of the base. But he's got to find it, and that is... Uh, that's going to require him to be scouting around a little bit, which he's moving. He's moving, but I'm not sure if he sniffs something out in the front door here of his base or he's going to continue to move around in the back. Yep, he is going to see that SEV and take it out. So that'll be a nice little delay. He's going to get a second SEV taking out the factory building SEV and a little bit of pot shots there. Some damage on that Mutalist down to 40 on the one, 41 on the one. Uh, but more, more or less, I would consider that safe. Could take out another building SCV. Uh, I think he was going for the Glaive Bounce and... Ooh! ooh, ooh. Oh, actually, he's doing okay. I thought uh, I th I thought that the Terran might be getting a Muta there. But uh, that's the trick. You know, when you're, when you're playing uh, Terran and you've got this Mass Marine, you stim. You don't want to just attack move into it. That gives the benefit to the Mutalisk. What you really want to do is uh, attack, uh, specifically attack click directly on one of them uh, to try to take it out. And, uh, you know, Stim Marines will take that out in a couple of volleys, especially when you've got a full control group. But it looks like uh, Greater Spire is on the way, about halfway done here. And the Mutas continue just to scout around and see if they can find anything. Uh, he's got to be careful. He might get sandwiched here if he's not careful. And especially as we've got now two full control groups plus... Uh, on the map, but Egio is, again, he is playing it smart. He's got 10 Muta out on the field, and it looks like he's going to try to get some free SEVs here. Uh, but the Terran player is, oh, scouting for some lurkers. I like that. That's a smart scan to make sure that they're not moving to their death. He has no idea about the guards, I would guess. And he's going to get a free base over here, or at least a free drone. Uh, and the Muta are going to continue to look for any opening that they can find. Uh, which it looks like nothing on the backside still uh, with those turrets. And he's going to morph all of them 
directly into guards. Oh, that was just scanned. Oh, oh, the oh, the surprise is gone. And he's got another couple guardian. Nope, that's not a guardian. That's a devourer. It's interesting. He picked the lower health ones to morph into the higher health devourers and the guardians. And devourers are nice because they got that plus two shield upgrade or carapace. Or what do we call flying carapace? Is it just carapace? Zerg flyer carapace. I should have known that. Uh, but the Guardians are going to go in there and start taking out the uh, Supply Depot line and some of the turrets, it looks like. He's got a turret, a Supply Depot, and now he's going to get some Marines. But, ooh, heavy fire for those Guardians who also have plus two armor, so they can take a few shots here. And they're going to clear out all the Marines. Super effective. Uh, i got to be careful. It's easy to drag them into the, uh, the turrets here, though. But definitely, this is a great position for Agio to be in. Uh, let's see if we've got... We do have a couple of starports here for our buddy S1. And he's making wraiths, so he's not going after the science vessels. We've got one guard down. Maybe a second one. Nope. Yeah, two guards look like they went down. So good pickoff for S1. And still a lot of Marines, but he's getting imbalanced. He's got a lot of Marines and a lot of medics. They're playing man-on-man uh, -man D here with one medic for every Marine. There's like literally medics that are like shooting them with their little stim packs or the healer things i don't know what i don't know how they heal actually now that i think about it that, that's something that i i never really understood uh, a couple more medics going down and and this is a beautiful spot for Egio to be attacking from very difficult it looks like the marines can get closer than they really can over here you end up stopping much further out than what it looks like so as soon as they start to run in they can't even get close i mean maybe he got one shot off there and I'm surprised he's waiting so long for these wraiths. Maybe he was worried about them being taken out. But he is finally going to be able to jump on those. The devourers are not going... Oh, there we go. Now they're jumping on the race. And uh, they're... What do we call these corrosive acids? I, I always confuse them. I don't want to call them the, uh, the corrosive bile or whatever, whatever it is in StarCraft 2. But a little bit of damage done to, uh, to the wraiths over here. And... It looks like the Wraith, though, I mean, the Wraith counter being five is pretty solid. That's going to start taking out, yeah, they're, they're like two volleys max taking out all of these Guardians. And there goes the Guards. He's down to the last one, and, and that uh, Devourer is not going to do too much better. Uh, a couple of volleys more for him, but, I mean, those Wraiths are in great shape. Uh, in the meantime, as we're focused on the Guardians, Egio has gone for an expansion with the Nidus Canal. I like that. That'll be nice and easier to defend. And he's trying once again for that 9 o'clock position. These are both the other two main bases in Python, uh, in case you were wondering. So that's what I was talking about. You know, these two basically mirror these two bases. And you can see that mineral patch we were talking about earlier as well. Uh, whoop! Looks like we had some guards that were coming from the bottom side here to the expansion. But with those with those wraiths, he is just not able to get anything done. Six wraiths clean that up pretty quickly. And he, he may have gotten a few SUVs there, but, um, yeah, he definitely got a few. I don't know how many. Uh, I would guess around six, seven, eight, something like that. Uh, we're still seeing a few more wraiths being built, and it looks like he's going to start taking out Overlords. I like that for the Terran player. Not good for Agio and all of these Muta. Not what you want to be seeing there either. We do have a Creep Colony there, but it's not a Spore Colony yet. And there's so many wraiths. What is that, ten wraiths? nine wraiths they're gonna one shot every single drone that they they go after and they're gonna get that spore colony he didn't have the evo chamber which is why he's just making the spore colony now so he knew what he had to do but it was just taking him a minute muters are gonna try to target down the weakest and they do get a couple of wraiths it looks like they're it's possible they're cleaning them up uh let's see no they're still there's still some pretty healthy race a few more muta come and join the uh, the battle here looks like he's gonna pick off another one if not two uh, they're not... Oh, there we go. He wasn't target firing, but he is now going for the Spore Colony, so this will be stopped, but not before there was a lot of damage. And by a lot of damage, I mean the 9 o'clock base was taken out at the same time. So great distraction tactics by the Terran player, although he is going to finally lose these last couple of wraiths here as the Spore Colony comes online and takes him out. But I'll tell you what, worthwhile trade from the standpoint of getting that base. Uh, he may go after the 6 o'clock as well. Looks like he's thinking about it. And he's going for his own, uh, what do we want to call that, 5 o'clock, 4.30, something like that. He's going for the corner base 
which by the way is, is pretty hard to defend. There's a very large ramp going across here. But I mean for the Terran player with a with a bunker or two and, and really positionally as he's keeping his Marines and, and uh, medics over here. Wow, that's a lot of medics. Uh, he's gonna be able to defend any any flanks pretty easily, at least for the short term. Uh, I'd say until Eggio gets up and running. We are seeing a switch to Hydras. I'm sure he's going to be morphing those into Lurkers here shortly. Let's take a look to see if he's got that... Uh, uh, no, I don't think... Oh, he does have it. Okay, he must have just finished that because... Man, it's hard to click on that. Uh, he's just he's just converting those to Lurkers now. So that'll be good for Agio to be able to defend these bases a lot easier. A couple of uh, Lurkers on the ramp. Oh, there's, one over, there's two over here already. So he's in pretty good shape. That's going to stop any sort of regular marine medic push without a tank and or science vessels, which we do have now, uh, but not many. He's only got the two of them, although he's making another one and a dropship. So let's keep an eye out for the dropship and see what he decides to do there. Again, I would assume we're going to see a drop back here, but Eggio may be uh, ready for it with these lurkers and the lings. Yeah, look at that. He is burrowed preemptively. I like it. And a couple of Scourge out as well, which will be good for both the Science Vessels and for the Dropships and for the Wraiths. And if he happens to make Valkyries, they're okay for that too. But uh, I think it actually takes three three Scourge for a Valkyrie. Let's see what these, uh, these, these two Science Vessels can do. Are they thinking about an Eraser? No, they're not. Which is unfortunate. I, I actually think the Eraser move... Oop. Ooh, oh, he took out that second Scourge, saves it the last second. But he does lose the Wraith, so I'd rather have gotten the Science Vessel, personally. He he did have a shot at the uh, Eraser, but certainly I, that would have had, that, that would have been risky going in deep like that against a potential Scourge attack. So now the, uh, wow, that is a lot of sun, because I didn't realize he went up to a solid 9. Uh, the tank is going to start chipping away, but... Plenty of time for him to get these defilers out and running. Uh, I thought, yep, there's the defiler mount just finishing consume. That would be a beautiful plague right there if he if he were to go after. But I would assume he's going to go for the the dark swarm and push out uh, before he loses this entire sunken line. Not sure what he's waiting for. Uh, he did. Oh, he took out a hydra list. Oh, there we go. Take out the lings, man. They'll take out the hydras. That's an expensive unit to consume. But he's got plenty of energy now here, so... Oh, we got a drop in the back. Totally missed it. I, I, we could rewind, but nah, let's keep going. Uh, looks like that's going to get cleaned up with uh, some lurkers and some lings. But he got a lot of drones there. In fact, he's down to 38. Uh, and wasting a dark swarm... Well, let's not use the term wasting, but using a dark swarm uh, to clean up the rest of this is unfortunate. Or, or not unfortunate, but... Cost a little bit. I mean, it's going to cost a consume of another couple of units. And a Dark Swarm at front as well. That's going to push these units back. Uh, looks like he got the tank at the same time and a science vessel. So a lot going on in this match. And S1, very cheeky going for this brazen base over here at the, let's call that, I don't know, 7 o'clock. Because it's not really, it's, it's almost like 6.30 actually. But right in the middle, um... And he did get, he got the 12 o'clock expansion as well. So, man, a lot of action going on early on. Well, I guess we're not early anymore. We're like 20 minutes into the game. And the Terran player, you know, he does have this base up and running uh, fully. He's got decent saturation. Decent saturation. A solid uh, dozen dozen SEVs or so. We've got another Dark Swarm coming out here. Looks like Egio is trying to continue to push out. Uh, lurkers are gonna get a couple of shots, but not enough to take it out. I'd love to see a scourge, and I thought I, I thought I just heard an irradiate. Uh, he did. He he got he irradiated one of the lurkers, which might oh both of them. I didn't realize he got both of them. I would have preferred he go after the defiler still. Uh, just such an expensive unit to be making, especially if he's got energy from uh, consuming units. A great pickoff. Uh, could be a plague opportunity here, but no, he's gonna stick with the dark swarm play, which is fine. Uh, especially since the Terran is waiting a little bit to pull out. But he is going to clear out all those lings at the very least. And, uh, yeah. Oh, running running right back into the the sandstorm over here. Not the best idea. Uh, it looks like this base may have been taken out a third time. We didn't catch that one. And we got another drop here. Is there still units in here? No. He's just dropping two units? Or maybe this just got cleaned up? Or maybe this lurker... 
No, the lurker didn't get any kills. I don't know. A lot going on. But anyway, it looks like our next battle is going to be over here. Oh, my replay bar is showing. My epidermis is showing. Uh, and big flank potentially from both sides with uh, mass marine. But no, and, and instead, more lurkers are going to jump out here. And oh, beautiful line. If he, if he targets this back one, yes, I love it. I love the tremor spikes. Oh, it's so beautiful to watch that, that go down. Uh, and now it's unlikely, yeah, I wouldn't want to push here either now that he lost that flank opportunity. And Egio is back out on the map, moving across, heading to the the uh, Terran base here, straight to the front door. He's got plenty of swarms to throw down. And uh, looks like he's going to get the first one out. There's the Irradiate. Oh, he actually only had enough for one swarm now that I look at it. Uh, let's see if he can get a consume off in time to get another swarm. No. A couple more Radiates go down. It looks like... Uh, Let's see, he's got, yeah, he's got at least one. Looks like he got one of the lurkers over there. And I hear stuff dying. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. Looks like there's uh, maybe some action going on over here. This is an interesting place to throw a couple factories and just start tanking up. Um, yeah, you know you know what? The the vessel count is a little bit low, and we can see that by the gas. Oh no, he spent his gas. I thought he. I was looking at the. I was looking at Egio's gas, but he is pumping out four now. So you can see that he he definitely could have had more vessels out by now with more energy, with more irradiate, and that that's actually kind of unfortunate because he could he could have taken out all these lurkers a lot quicker had he been a little bit more on top. Uh, five lurkers down here. We're up to five vessels right now. Soon to be six, seven. Yep, there they are. Eight, nine, and ten are on the way. And it looks like uh, Terran was thinking about pushing, but backing off at this point. Egio is mining out and uh, and both the top bases. He could just knight us those units down here to uh, the bottom. He's building that 12 o'clock back up for at least the second time, if not the third time. And a, ooh, a nice drop goes down with a couple of dark swarms. So much action going on at once. And uh, the supply depot line just getting demolished here. Taking him down, that's a heavy supply cap to have. Taking him down to 112, if not further, 104. More overlords coming in just with Lings. It looks like he's content just to take out these uh, the supply depots, which isn't a terrible move, but the Terran isn't losing much. Oh, nice vessel taken out. The Terran's not losing a lot in terms of Marines or tanks. Um, he's still at 143, so not a terrible place for, for the Terran player to be. But man, losing that many supply depots, it's going to take a little while. Looks like he, he yeah, I was going to say he's been quick building them down here instead to try to stay out of the supply block. And going up to a fifth base at the 9 o'clock. But a Zerg Overlord is going to scout that and... Egio, very clever, is taking a, with that drop uh, technology that he's developed, taking the bottom left, and I'm wondering, he is considering the top right as well. So he's got a, a good bank of cash to, to take that. And, uh, I, you know, this is going to put him in a great position. The Terran player, we haven't seen a drop ship in a while. I think the last one must have been taken out when he was up here in the corner. And there's a lot of scourge protecting against any future drop ships. So it's getting a little messy, and a couple of links finally finally head down to the 730 base but not before he mined a pretty decent amount from these mineral patches uh it looks like he is going to get a few scvs but the scvs are able to defend against the, the handful of lings uh and it looks like an ebay is floating over to see what's going on on the top right here a lot of terran units out on the map he's up to 162 to the 142 of Egio. and really i think if he were to just make a decisive move he could have some success here a lot of tanks out on the field. It looks like a solid control group of tanks. Uh, Dark Swarm is out for the Lurkers, but Tank Splash is going to take out anything else that's going on here. Uh, hard to take out the, the Lurkers with Tank Splash, but with all the Irradiates going down, he is able to take out those Lurkers without too much of an issue. And Aikyo is in a very tight spot all of a sudden. This, this base is where his minerals are. And uh, certainly the Terran player realizes that. A nice vessel taken out by some Scourge. It's unfortunate. It'd be nice if he took some, some more uh, Scourge down from here. We are seeing an attack. Sorry for <laughs> stepping away at the last second there. But Lings are taking out these tanks. I am surprised that these Marines are so far back. There is no reason to have left, lost that many tanks 
like that. We are seeing a lot of lurkers, and Eggio's gonna be able to clean this up without much of an issue. Not a ton of units lost. Beautiful Dark Swarms getting right up on the Terran player. Burrow! Burrow, man! Burrow the lurkers! Let them get some shots out. They're just chilling. They're like, eh, you guys can't hit me. We're in a sandstorm. Single lurker just taking out Marines like a boss. I wish I could click on him. There he is. Let's see how many uh, kills he's got. Three. Just three. Yeah, just three. Okay, well, not that many kills. Uh, in the meantime, it doesn't look like we see any other action going on. Again, oh, wish he was just going to burrow those couple of units. Looks like he may, he may not catch that in time. Oh, there we go. We got him burrowed finally. And he's going to get a few more kills and continue to push out here. And the Terran's got some techs that are exposed again. And now Eggio is on the supply up and up. He's now outpacing the Terran player. Uh, and again, more drops in the main base, and this could be it. He's taken out the production facilities at this point with only a couple of factories down here. This is going to spell disaster for the Terran player as he's burning and unable to do much of anything as he continues to lose more supply depots uh, and pretty much everything else that's left over here. Uh, in the meantime, what do we have for the Terran? It looks like he's trying to regroup a little bit, but I don't know if he, he's just confused or maybe he's he's talking smack on the game but no he's he's lifting up and going elsewhere i don't know if he was going for a hidden base but Egio is going to check out this base over here take that out as well and now Terran is 100 percent on the back foot he's down to 137 supply he's going to lose a couple more medics there we got lurkers just like threatening this 730 base like we could take you out we're not gonna, but we could. We're just gonna hang by the turret, unburrowed. That's how That's how much we're worried about this. Be nice if he took out that turret. Oh, take out the turret! It, it's right there! Oh, it's so close. So close. But he lets it go. And uh, that Terran base will continue to mine. But I, I don't think it's enough. I don't think the Terran player's got enough in him at this point. He's got plenty of minerals here, but the problem is the production facilities were just ravaged. And uh, it's gonna be difficult for him to come back at this point. He's got Ultras on the field, and they are heavily upgraded. Plus two, plus five Ultras. We're going to see the same for these Cracklings for sure. Two, three, and uh, this is it. This is game. There is no coming back. We can just watch the supply numbers drop up here to nothing. He's under 100. Oh, he's back over 100. Uh, he'll be back under 100 here shortly. As Eggio, all he's got to do is, is push this either base, actually. These tanks are not going to be enough to take out Lings and Ultras. Uh, and if Eggio wanted, he could go for another drop. Looks like Scourge are finally going on the hunt for some vessels. And this is going to be it. I'm going to call GG in 3, 2, 1. Uh, I'm not that good anymore. I used to be that good where I could call the GG. But that's, that's definitely going to wrap it up. He is uh, out of units. And there it is. I don't know what he said. Hopefully it wasn't bad mannerism. Actually, hopefully it was. That always makes it fun. When the, uh, when, when the person who loses is a little bit salty, let's be honest here. And uh, Eggio going to clean it up. Beautiful game and uh, definitely showcasing a pretty nice uh, TVZ, ZVT matchup for him. Uh, looks like, yep, got to get that last bit of salt out. And uh, S1 doesn't even kill that last base as he realizes it doesn't matter. So very nicely done. Looks like Eggio did one more small little ling drop here uh, before leaving uh, just, just to rub it in. And that was a great game. So that's game two. Uh, we're going to do one more. We'll do a ZVZ next. And then we'll move on to our next streamer spotlight. So uh, just a reminder, check Eggio out at twitch.tv slash Eggio. I'll put the links down in the description. He streams pretty regularly, usually in the evenings from what I've seen. And again, great guy. Uh, likes to teach what he's doing. And you've got, you've got an A-rank, S-rank S Zerg uh, explaining to you every move that he's doing. And also... He has a wide variety of builds that he does. I mean, I, I've seen Hydras, I've seen Guards, I've seen Mutas, Ultras, uh, and every every uh, combination of the above or below or whatever I just said that is worth checking out and a lot of fun to watch. So check him out if you get a chance. Tell him Rai sent you, and we'll see you in the next game. Take care.